Hi, this is Dr. Ron Modern of Modern Institute for Mind Body Wellness, and this is your weekly Words of Wellness. Now, today, what I'd like to talk about is the concept of hedonic restraint. Uh, that means just delaying gratification. Now, that can be very important, um, especially when we're working on cognitive distortions, when we're working on thinking errors and things like that. Now, in the book, uh, Living Well, A Guide to Cognitive Behavioral Skills Exercises, we go through many of the thinking errors and uh, how to correct them. Uh, certainly the list of cognitive biases is huge, but we cover some of the most common ones. For example, closed-mindedness, okay, closed thinking. Uh, if we're using that, uh, if we're using any thinking errors, we're also using that one. Uh, but if we're using that, then we're not open to doing anything different. So when we look at the stages of change that go from um, the pre-contemplation stage to contemplation to preparation, action, maintenance, and then the relapse stage. If we look at those, we can't move, we can't make any progress throughout those uh, stages of change if we are closed to uh, learning new thinking, to learning new behavior, and what have you. So closed thinking is in there, closed mindedness, uh, all or nothing thinking, black and white thinking, dichotomous thinking, all talking about the same thing is a very common error overgeneralization, mental filter, discounting the positive, jumping to conclusions, catastrophizing, uh, emotional reasoning uh, is one, victim stance is very common in our society, personalization and blame, power thrust, and instant gratification. Now, any responsible thinking corrects any irresponsible thinking, so the responsible thinking that we use for any of these will get us out of irresponsible thinking because I'm no longer thinking irresponsibly, I'm thinking responsibly. But uh, the uh, hedonic restraint, that delaying gratification, certainly uh, directly applies to uh, a problem that is uh, endemic uh, not only in our society but throughout the world. Uh, these days it seems to be a problem uh, of our times and that is that instant gratification. Now this isn't something new uh, as human beings we've uh, sort of always had this uh, uh, problem with instant gratification. Um, in fact uh, the way we correct instant gratification uh, we can do that through using some of the techniques that were taught by the Stoic philosophers. Remember that cognitive behavioral therapy was really invented by the Stoics, okay? And now they didn't call it that, it was just Stoic philosophy. Uh, but uh, many, of the, uh, many of the skills that we use, many of the techniques that we have, uh, were really invented by them a long time ago. So Epictetus, who was one of the major Roman Stoics, there were three major Roman Stoics, Epictetus, Seneca, and Marcus Aurelius. Okay. And if you read their writings, they all, you'll notice they all sort of say the same thing because they were all studying the same philosophy. So Stoicism is, um, is fairly consistent across that. And what Epictetus talked about was something called anetu kai apetu. Now forgive my Greek, uh, it's, it's Greek to me, uh, but uh, that anetu kai apetu, which means to bear and to forbear. It means to hold on and to hold off. Okay, and this is certainly how we correct that instant gratification. I want to do something right now. I want to change what I'm doing right now. And we really need to learn the ability to hold on and to hold off. This is especially with something like frustration, right? Everybody is affected by frustration. I want something and I don't have it right now. That's what frustration is, right? It's unfulfilled desire. So that frustration that we feel Anger is just an enhanced form of that. Uh, so if I have anger problems, certainly this is something that's going to help me work on that. Uh, so how do I do that? How do I hold on and, and learn to hold off as well? Well, there's a couple of things that you can do. Okay, um, The uh, ability to hold on, to continue uh, what I'm doing, uh, is very much uh, facilitated by something like taking cold showers. Okay, now, nobody likes cold showers that I know of. Okay, uh, but they're very useful for us. They're very healthy for us, uh, for most people. Okay, don't start any cold showers. Don't uh, start things that um, uh, may have to do with your health 
uh, without checking with your primary care physician first. Uh, but something like cold showers, very simple, right? Uh, nobody really likes them, but really, what is it? What does it take? I mean, they're actually beneficial for us, and those uh, benefits have been um, cataloged by Wim Hof. Uh, if you're familiar with Wim Hof, Wim Hof is the Ice Man, right? He's a crazy Dutchman. Uh, goes swimming under the icebergs and uh, climbs Mount Kilimanjaro in shorts, uh, and that's it. Um, a couple times a year, has climbed Mount Everest to a certain extent, uh, wearing nothing but shorts and tennis shoes and what have you. And he leads his groups of, uh, of students up there as well, and uh, everybody does just fine. And one of the things that he teaches them, apart from diaphragmatic breathing, okay, which we've covered before, and we've covered the the importance of diaphragmatic breathing in our life, uh, but he uses diaphragmatic breathing and he uses cold therapy, hence his uh, moniker of the Iceman. Uh, and that cold therapy he's been able to show um, along with the breathing and along with commitment, those are his three uh, focuses. Um, cold therapy, diaphragmatic breathing, commitment. And that commitment is really that ability to bear and to forbear, to hold on and to hold off. Because when you're getting in that uh, ice water, when you're getting in that cold water, you're taking that cold shower, uh, then for a certain period of time, then you need to hold on for that period of time. So uh, Wim has uh, done a lot of work in that area. They've done a lot of research on him. Uh, he's not just a freak. Okay, we could we could look at that and say, well, the things he does that's just specific to him. But um, we've actually done research uh, on uh, Wim and he has taught his method to groups of students so they use a control group they had an experimental group uh, and um, he taught them uh, his breathing method taught them his cold method and what have you and uh, noticed that uh, there was distinct uh, differences between those two groups between the experimental group and the control group uh, when they did the experiment so it's not just whim it's the process it's the method uh, that he has so that cold therapy is those cold showers uh, nobody likes him. In fact, Wim doesn't like the cold. I mean, Wim's often asked, you know, he's known as the Ice Man. People will ask him, do you like, do you really like cold water? Do you like taking cold showers? And Wim always says, no, of course not. I hate cold showers. I love warm showers. Uh, but that's, that's the point, right? Um, one of the stories from the Stoics, uh, sort of the philosophical grandfather of Zeno, who was the father of the Greek Stoics, was uh, Diogenes of Sinope. And uh, he had the habit of stripping naked in the middle of winter and going and hugging bronze statues, uh, sort of to you know, develop that, that cold ability, that ability to hold on uh, to something. Um, until you know, one day uh, one of the um, um, Spartans uh, was there, Spartans known for their laconic sayings. And the Spartan asked him, so I'm hugging that statue, and he said, uh, is that is it, isn't that uncomfortable for you to be in the middle of winter? You're naked, you're holding this bronze statue. And Diogenes said, no, not at all. It's not really uncomfortable at all. Uh, so the Spartan said, then what's the point? And, and that is the point, right? If I'm not getting anything out of it, this isn't challenging me in any way, then I'm not learning anything. Uh, and certainly, <laughs> certainly Wim will tell you that he does not like cold weather, does not like cold showers and things like that. But it's important to develop that ability or hedonic restraint. Uh, now, Wim also does it. There's major health benefits to this and what have you in taking those cold showers, but also helps develop that hedonic restraint. It develops that ability to um, delay gratification on things. And that ability to delay gratification is how we correct the instant gratification. Okay? Now, that cold showers, that's one of the ways we can uh, sort of uh, hold, uh, you know, we bear it, we hold on. i got to take this cold shower for 30 seconds, right? And in fact, that's sort of his uh, challenge that he does if you're first starting it and you're getting ready for the, the cold therapy. And it's for five days you're going to take a cold shower for uh, 30 seconds, okay? Personally, when I, when I do this, I like a nice hot shower first and then do the 30 seconds. Uh, you know it's going to be startling, you know it's going to be uncomfortable, but it's only 30 seconds long. If I know that anything's going to end, I can bear it. Uh, so that 30 seconds. Um, and that's oftentimes where we get to when we're dealing with uh, frustrations, when we're dealing with stress, when we're dealing with other mental health problems, is to understand that you know there's an end to this. I can use cognitive behavioral skills, I can uh, do some therapy, I can get myself out of this. This is not going to last forever. 
I can work myself out of this with the help of others. So uh, that ability to know that this is, is going to end at some point. I just have to hold on uh, until, until I get there. Uh, it's very important. Now the hold off part, um, one of the things that uh, I like to do, uh, and once again, uh, don't start any uh, dieting or health regime without first talking to your primary care physician. But one that's become popular and that I particularly like is intermittent fasting. Okay, so there's a lot of research coming out and has been coming out for a while on intermittent fasting and that is holding off, right? I'm not eating, okay? I'm just holding off, may eat for a specific time, okay? Fast five is one of those. It's been around, it's been around for actually a long time, uh, that fast five. So I'm uh, 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 fasting for uh, uh, 19 hours a day and uh, fasting for five hours a day, fast five. Uh, fast for 19 hours and I eat during the five hours okay so during those five hours I can eat whatever I want I can eat how much I want okay but I'm fasting for the other 19 there's also other fasts there's a, a two five fast and things like that um, where over five days you only have two uh, moderate meals and what have you lots of interesting things uh, to do with intermittent fasting the health benefits of that are being recorded once again don't start it without consultation with your primary care physician but that is one way, right? I'm holding off. I'm learning to fast. I'm learning to hold off something. Another uh, simple way that we can do uh, to hold off from that uh, simply is if you have an itch, don't scratch it. Okay? It's, it's not going to kill you. Okay? If you have an itch, it's not going to kill you if you don't scratch it. Uh, you, but you might be very uncomfortable during that time. You know, I need to scratch this. I, you know, this is, this is uncomfortable for me. But little things like that, little things, when I get an itch, I don't scratch it, okay? That teaches that restraint. That teaches me to delay gratification. If I wait long enough, it's just going to go away, okay? So that teaches me a lot. I can learn a lot from something that simple as simply not scratching that itch. And this ability to delay gratification... Um, not only in our daily lives, uh, dealing with the frustrations of daily lives, but also in some of the other issues like we talked about, mental health issues, what have you. Substance abuse issues is going to be one of them. Uh, alcohol and other drugs uh, fulfills a need for us or fools the brain into thinking that the needs are being fulfilled. And between the time that I stop using and the time that I find other ways to fulfill those needs, I'm going to be very frustrated during that time. And my ability to delay gratification is going to be very important. So practicing those sort of things, anetu kai apetu, to bear and to forbear, to hold on and to hold off. A couple of simple exercises, right? The, the bearing part, 30 seconds in a cold shower every day, okay? Take your, take your shower, 30 seconds. You're going to stand in the cold shower. First week, next week, up it to 45, next week, up it to a minute. Okay, but uh, that's the, the bearing part. I'm, I'm training myself, okay, I'm training myself uh, mentally as well as physically to bear what's going on. And then the forebear part, to hold off and something just as simple as not scratching an itch, okay. Uh, it sounds very simple, uh, but when we put it into practice, we learn uh, that uh, time is certainly relative, that uh, what seems like... Um, a very short time can seem like a long time when I really want to do something like scratch that itch. Uh, and then certainly there's some other ways to do that, such as intermittent fasting and what have you. Once again, don't start any of these things, okay? Don't start the cold showers. There are medical conditions that are not good. Me taking cold showers is not going to be good for me. Uh, me doing intermittent fasting is not going to be good for me. So make sure you talk to your primary care physician before you start anything. I think that we're safe in saying not scratching an itch is going to be okay. You can practice that. You can practice that part. Uh, but those are some of the uh, tools, those are some of the skills that we can use to work on this cognitive error of instant gratification that we have. And once again, we all use thinking errors. Okay, We all use them. Okay? I use them, you use them, mother uses them. Okay? Uh, it's how much we use them that determines really where we are on a scale in our life um, that uh, causes us problems. So we want to use those as little as possible. And as far as the thinking error of instant gratification, 
uh, one of the things we can do is use that stoic practice, that old stoic practice of anetu kai apetu, to hold on and to hold off, uh, using some very, very simple techniques for that. Uh, and that helps us, um, helps us in our life, helps us change that uh, thinking air. I can use some of the other cognitive skills we have, right? Uh, well, I, you know, I didn't scratch the itch and I didn't die, um, you know. Uh, so we can apply this sort of thinking to other areas of our life. So once again, in the book, okay, Living Well, Guide to Cognitive Behavioral Skills Exercises, available on Amazon.com. We have many of the thinking errors. They're the most common ones. There's a long list of them that we use. But the most common, some of the most common we have there. And we also have corrections for those. And certainly there are exercises in there that you can work on to correct those. The one for instant gratification, this is what we recommend right here. Okay, So working on that sort of thing. So uh, this is Dr. Ron Modern. This has been your words of wellness for the week. Please go to our website, www.moderninstitute.com, to find out more of our services. If you'd like uh, to uh, enlist our services, you can contact us through the website. And also go to our uh, Facebook page, facebook.com slash moderninstitute. Uh, we try to post uh, some um, motivational things on there, some informational things that have to do with health and wellness in our lives. So check us out on Facebook. Like us there. Go to our um website, uh, moderninstitute.com, and also all of our vlogs for the Words of Wellness are on the uh, website. So there's a place there that said Words of Wellness Vlog. You can go there. You can watch the past ones that we've talked about and upcoming ones that we'll do. So this is Dr. Ron Modern once again for your Words of Wellness. Thank you for your time.